Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd Continuing on in our very brief editorial or study of Shaykh uh, of Ahmed Muhammad as Sadiq and Najjar Hafidhullah Ta'ala his treaties that was introduced by Shaykh Salih al-Suhaymi and Shaykh Suleiman Ibn Salim al uh, Salim Allah uh, al-Rahili Hafidhullah Ta'ala Hafidhahum Allah Ta'ala we reached and we mentioned that these are principles to determine uh, that distinguish Ahl Sunnah from Ahl Bid'ah and with regards to determining whether someone is Sunni or you know from Ahl Sunnah or their Salafi versus someone being an innovator. So these principles are pertinent to that and, and, and have a very uh, are very useful for us because we live in a time of great fitna when people are ready to expel others from the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with ease. And then there's another group of people who declare anyone and everyone to be Salafi or from Ahlul Sunnah. And we have people who do all kind of deeds and actions and say that they're Salafi. But in fact, as the ulama say, and this is a, a principle, uh, a qaida, uh, it's a fiqh principle and a uh, principle in aqidah in the religion as well. Al ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat, which means that the proof of something is in what it is in reality. So if I have, for example, a cup of water, and I say, this water is Pepsi. That even though I've changed the name, the reality of that substance is it's still Pepsi. Likewise, in an issue of Tahara, if I say I want to use to make wudu, I want to use Pepsi, for example, or I want to use water that has been tainted severely by uh, urine or something like this, a Allah, and it's now changed its color and its smell and its taste or, or what have you. And to such an extent that it is, we no longer, as the custom, consider it to be water anymore. And I say, I'm going to make wudu with that. To me, that's water. That's pure water. But in fact, no matter the fact that I've given it this name, it is still in reality, it is impure. So the fact that we change the name or have given it a name does not change its reality. And likewise in Aqidah, in Creed or in Minhaj, if someone says, I'm from Ahl Sunnah, it isn't sufficient to just claim that because in fact they could be from Ahl Bidah. If he is a person who makes takfir of people without the right to do so, based on ignorance, based on false principles, whatever the case may be, then in reality, this person may be a takfiri, not a person, not someone who is Salafi, not who, someone, someone who is following the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the Madhab and the Salaf of this Ummah, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in. Or, for example, someone could be very, uh, they could be on the methodology of Ikhwan al-Muslimin, being very uh, much into... Uh, involving themselves in political parties and political changes and a particular methodology of how to deal with other Muslims regardless of their bid'ah and, and so forth that they unite with them under the umbrella of excusing the mistakes of one another and uniting on those things that they agree upon even if they're Shia, even if they're Takfiri, even if they're uh, some other extremist sect or extreme Sufi, but they unite upon unite with them. This is the madhab of the Khan Muslimin. And then at the same time, this person claims they're Salafi, but in fact, 
Al-Ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat. In fact, this person has more in agreement in their usul and their foundation with the Khwana Muslimin than they do with following the madhhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. So that is an, uh, how we can exemplify that qaida, that important principle that I just mentioned. So going back to the treaties, Ahmed, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he mentioned, or Sheikh Ahmed mentioned, that the first principle, he said, the qaida ula that we already mentioned, is that you take your religion from the Quran and the Sunnah, that the Salaf, they took their religion, that this was the origin and how they deduced their, they took their evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma. And since they were the Salaf, that meant the Ijma of the Sahaba, which is the Aqwa, is the strongest consensus and the best and the Asl of the consensus and it is the Asl or the origin of the uh, of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah. It's the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala and Majma'in, and they're the Asl of the Salaf as well. And they're the Asl of the Jama'ah. So this is very important for us to understand, and that is the first principle. The second principle that he mentioned, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said that everyone who differs with the Salaf in the, with regards to this uh, this masdar, this, this um, of, of where they take their, their uh, knowledge from, then they are a person of desires and a person of innovation. And we already spoke about that in the last lesson. Then moving on to the third qaida, qaida thalith, la ijma mundabit illa ma kana alayhi al qurun al thalatha al mufaddala. Then he mentioned half of the Allah Ta'ala. He mentioned the third principle. He said that there isn't an ijma, there is not a consensus which is mundabit, meaning that which is uh, codified, or that is, codified might be the appropriate word, that is, that we can use as a singular criterion, except for that which was the qurun al-thalatha al-mufaddala, meaning the salaf. So that there is no consensus which is codified with a, a very agreed upon criterion except for the criterion or the consensus of the salaf of this ummah meaning the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in and the tabi'in rahimahumullah and the itba'a tabi'in rahimahumullah that that is the strongest ijma and the most distinguishable because throughout other generations some some of the great imams imam nawawi and imam uh, uh, ibn abdul bar and many other great imams of the sunnah would mention in their books that ijma on such and such issue, that there's an ijma, there's a consensus on this issue. And sometimes there might be a scholar or two or more that actually did not agree with that consensus. So this is what he's saying here is that the strongest consensus, the strongest ijma, and the most codified and accepted that there is no, that is, that is, has a strongest criterion is that of the salaf. Then moving on, he said Al Qaeda Rabia, the fourth principle. Al Asl Aladi Tubna Alehi al Jama Hua Atamasik Bima Kana Alehi at Sahaba Radi Allah Talani Bajmain. So he mentioned the fourth principle. He said that the origin or the foundation which is built upon the origin of the or the foundation of the jama'ah, you know, of the group of Ahl Sunnah that uh, that is built upon that it, that's that is that was built upon. It is 
the thing that it's built upon is tamasik bima kana alayhi sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in it is adhering to that which the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in were upon so that's the asl of the jama'ah that is the origin of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah if someone asks you what is this statement ahl sunnati wal jama'ah where does it come from the asl when we say the people of the sunnah and the group it's in reference the asal of that jama'ah of this group and the people of the sunnah is the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala and ajma'in the people who were there when when revelation was being revealed the people who uh, transmitted this religion and preserved the quran and memorized the quran and memorized the sunnah and passed it on and passed on the principles on how to deal with Ahl Bid'ah and who Ahl Sunnah was and Fiqh and the Asl of the other aspects of the religion, it's a Sahaba. And to verify for us this principle is the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, where he said, If tarakat al Yahuda la itta wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakat al Nasara la itna tain wa sab'in firqa, وستفترك هذه أمة على ثلاثة وسبعين فرقة كلها في النار الواحدة كل من هي يا رسول الله قال من كان على مثي وما كان عليه وصحابي وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said in a hadith which is well known to us, uh, which is that the Jews would break into seventy-one sects and the Christians into seventy-two sects and my nation would break into seventy-three sects, all of them in the fire except one. Subhanallah. All of them in the fire except one, meaning many the sects in our in our ummah, in our nation, the nation of Muhammad وسلم, would into the fire. And the ulama differ over the tafsir of this hadith. Some of them say that uh, that this shows that these are people within the fold of Islam. Because the Prophet وسلم, said, Wasatafariku Hadihi Ummah. This is, that this ummah should divide, will divide, meaning his ummah, his nation. And for in order for them to be his nation, they have to be Muslim. So this is evidence that they are, that the nation would divide and they would still remain being Muslims, but because of their bid'ah and their sectarianism, they would enter the fire at least for a time for purification and come out. Of course, they're at the Mashiach, they're under the mercy of of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his will to barak wa ta'ala but the point being here then the Prophet alayhi salatu was asked who are they Ya Rasulullah meaning who was who the saved one from these groups because you mentioned that the Christians and the Jews broke into those sects and your nation will break into these sects so they wanted to know the Sahaba they wanted knowledge and they had fiqh and they wanted they wanted to come closer to Allah, so they were always asking about the religion. Man he ya Rasulullah, who are they? They were fearful of being in the fire. The Prophet والسلام, said, Those who are upon my sunnah and that of my companions. And that's where this qaida comes from. That we said that the origin or the foundation which that is built up that the Jamaat is built upon is adhering to what the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in was upon. And we'll end this lesson here and until the next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.